Well, hey, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News TV. Now, I know a lot of people are hanging out around the house for good reason, and uh, you have a lot of free time on your hands. And something that I thought I would like to share with you um, while looking through my library, um, I chose five. And there's many more, but there, I chose five what I consider must-read books on infectious diseases. And some, they range in age from the early 1980s up to just like last year. So it's a, a wide range of the five books in, in a span of time. But they're all really, really good, well-written, informative, and uh, really, really important. And you can learn a lot from each of these books. And they're very good for the layperson. And that was part of my criteria for picking out these books. And uh, let me go ahead and start out with um, the first one. And this is the oldest book on my list of must-read books. And it's New Guinea Tapeworms and Jewish Grandmothers by the late, great Robert Desowitz. Really good stuff. And I recommend all his stuff. He's a fantastic, he was a fantastic writer and a parasitologist. And as many of you know, of all the... Um, microbiology sciences uh, disciplines parasitology is my favorite so Robert Desowitz is is um, got a special place in my heart concerning books and he does a really great job in this small book from I think it's 1981 and he talks about different types of parasitic diseases and he lays it out in a very uh, novel uh, like approach um, a whole chapter on schistosomiasis, uh, chapters on the tsetse fly and African sleeping sickness. And of course, the chapter based that the title of the book is based on New Guinea tapeworms and Jewish grandmothers. And uh, just to give you a, a feel, he's talking about how uh, Scandinavian fishermen and Jewish grandmothers of New York City uh, were both part of this getting the fish tapeworm Diphilobothrium latum back in the uh, 100 years ago in this country, in the United States. And uh, it says, when Scandinavian fishermen came to the United States during the 19th century, many settled in the lake region of Minnesota and Wisconsin. And there they began their practice, their trade, and their habits. Uh, shortly thereafter, the fish in these lakes became infected. So the fishermen went out in the lake, catching their fish. But while they were out there, instead of pulling in every time they had to go to the bathroom, they let loose in the lake. And this fish eventually made its way from the Midwest to New York City, where the Jewish grandmothers would go and pick up this fish to make uh, in a concoction called, uh, let me make sure I say, say it right, gefilte fish. And when they would cook it, um, they didn't, weren't using thermometers. They would... You know, pick out pieces of the fish and, and t taste it and, and determine whether it was done or not. So a lot of these um, Jewish grandmothers and mothers uh, were contracting the fish tapeworm via cooking. And one one little phrase that he used, and, and this is very typical of uh, Robert Desowitz in, in his uh, writing, he wrote, uh, they would sample the fish until it was cooked just right. The early samples were still quite raw and, if infected, contained viable worm larvae. In this way, many a nice old lady of Gotham unwittingly acquired a 40-foot Scandinavian immigrant in her digestive, digestive tract. So that's just, you know, kind of a, a, a clue into how um, Dr. Desiwith, um used to write. So it's good stuff, and I encourage you to check it out and any of his other books, um, The Malaria Capers, um, uh, and se several other books I have in my library. They're really, really good. So again, that's New Guinea Tapeworms and Jewish Grandmothers, Tales of Parasites and People. So that's the first one of my recommendations. Um, my second recommendation is something much more current. Was, I think it was came out in 2019. Uh, and that's from Peter Hotez down at... Uh, Baylor. And it's Vaccines Did Not Cause Rachel's Autism, My Journey as a Vaccine Scientist, Pediatrician, and Autism Dad. And this is fantastic, fantastically written. A very personal story. Dr. Hotez, of course, is, like it says in the title, a pediatrician. He's a vaccine scientist. He's been working on um, 
uh, tropical diseases, neglected tropical diseases for his whole life, uh, an expert on these topics. He's also been working on uh, producing vaccines for a lot, of the, a lot of these diseases. And his daughter, Rachel, was has autism. And he talks about the trials that him and his wife have gone through over the years. Rachel is now an adult. Um, but he also has you know, that very personal stuff. And then he has chapters on the science of vaccines and um, what does actually cause autism and, and topics like that. So it's a really, really good book. Um, again, I have several of his books, Blue Marble Health and, and others, and it's very good. Um, Dr. Hotez is a very good writer also. So I encourage you to check that one out. Vaccines did not cause Rachel's autism. Good book. Um, the, my next book came out in around 2017 and, and it's a very good one too. And actually another friend of the show. Um, this is by Dr. Mike Osterholm up at the SIDRAP. And it's Deadliest Enemy, Our War Against Killer Germs. Highly recommend it. And in this book, Dr. Osterholm, who is an epidemiologist up at the University of Minnesota, he's, I think he used to work for the Minnesota Department of Health. He's had all kinds of different positions over the years, but he's been running SIDRAP for quite some time now. In this book, he goes over a lot of different topics, um, going back to when he was part of the initial investigation of toxic shock syndrome linked to uh, tampons, if you remember that from the late 70s, early 80s. Um, he talks about bioterrorism. Uh, he talks about vaccines, uh, a whole bunch, you know, the hemorrhagic fevers, Ebola, and other diseases like that. But interestingly, he does have a very interesting chapter. He talks about influenza too, because that's one of his big concerns is influenza and uh the pandemic potential. Uh, but he does do a chapter on SARS and MERS. And he, he entitles that chapter, Harbingers of Things to Come. And this is how he closes out that chapter. Uh, talking about SARS. He, and he says, As of this writing, in the wake of the West African Ebola epidemic, government interest in, this, in the disease, SARS, um, has waned and vaccine manufacturers have made nothing for their efforts. Given their wariness at being left at the altar yet again, we should not expect major players in vaccine manufacturing to cough up big money for the next international infectious disease crisis. This is our big challenge. If we don't face up to it and don't heed the recommendations and strategies in experts and expert reports, I have no doubt that we will regret our inaction. So, um, somewhat prophetic there, but uh, yeah, fantastic book. Again, that's Dr. Mike Osterholm, Deadliest Enemy, Our War Against Killer Germs. And I think that came out in 2017. Um, it's one of the more, yeah, it came out in 2017. So very good book, highly recommended. Uh, the next one is, I think this is from either 2018 or 2019. Um, it's pretty recent also, and it's a, a fantastic book. Also, like like uh, Dr. Hotez's book, this is highly personal also. And it's called The Perfect Predator, A Scientist's Race to Save Her Husband from a Deadly Superbug. And uh, like some of these other books, I have talked to the authors and um, on the podcast, so I encourage you to check that out at the website, operatenewstoday.com. Um, and I got a chance to talk to both uh, Dr. Stephanie Strathy and Dr. Thomas Patterson, husband and wife team, both professors at one of the universities in California. She's an epidemiologist. I think he's a psychologist. But this story is interesting. They apparently were on a trip, vacation in Egypt. And he came down with an illness and they couldn't figure it out in Egypt. So they... I don't want to give away the whole story, but it, he got airlifted to Germany. They couldn't figure it out there. Um, got airlifted over to, back to California. He was getting worse and worse and worse. And they finally discovered that he had an incredibly antibiotic-resistant strain of Acinetobacter. Um, and she, as an epidemiologist, was sitting there, well, i got to save my husband's life. This is Nothing was working. And she started doing a lot of independent research on her own. And she eventually stumbled across or 
maybe she didn't stumble, but she came across um, phage therapy, the use of bacteriophages uh, in treating um, uh, bacterial infections, which is basically a long gone thing in the United States. But some countries, I think some countries in Europe still uh, use it pretty prominently. And uh, she finally got all, you know people to get on board with this, and they and then they found the right bacteriophage to use and um, successfully treated him with this. And it's an amazing story. Um, and I got like I said, I got a chance to talk to both of them. He's doing well, and uh, thanks to his wife uh, Stephanie. So again, another must read book when you especially when you have a lot of this free time right now. Uh, with the current situation. So again, must read book, The Perfect Predator, Stephanie Strathy and Thomas Patterson. And the fifth one I'm going to go over is a big one, 60 pages long. And it, this was actually required reading back in the 90s when I was doing my master's. And it was, it definitely got me, if I wasn't already in, highly interested in infectious diseases then, which I was, uh, this took me to another level, and this is kind of why I saved it for the last book. And I think it came out around 94-ish, and uh, when I was doing my master's in the 90s, um, like I said, this was required reading. This is from Lori Garrett, and this is called The Coming Plague, Newly Emergent Diseases in a World Out of Balance. Thick book, right? 600 pages, well worth your time, well worth the read. And Lori, does, she's a writer by trade, so she does a fantastic job. Um, going over a whole bunch of different issues, um, uh, ranging from Machupo virus to Marburg and Lassa and Ebola, swine flu, um, name it. She talks about STDs and injecting drug users. Uh, she was she was known back in the day for her writing on HIV and AIDS, and she has a chapter on that. Um, and she talks about other things like the interactions of poverty, poor housing, and social despair with disease. Um, so many other things, uh, the impact of global warming, biodiversity, and other issues that go on with um, infectious diseases and outbreaks. And um, again, an older book, but it, it's still um, timely. There's nothing that... Uh, makes this book not timely at this time in, in our life. So again, I want to encourage you to check this one out. Again, it's The Coming Plague, Newly Emerging Diseases in a World Out of Balance by Lori Garrett. And if you're interested in any of these books, I'll go ahead and link to them down below in the show notes. And so you can check them out for yourself. I encourage you to check them out. If you got free time, these are some fantastic books to read. And there's other ones I, I should have put on there, but I, I wanted to do, do five books. Um, uh, John Barry's book on the um, 1918 influenza pandemic, very good. Uh, I'll, I'll even link to that. It was very good. I, as a matter of fact, I couldn't find it. I must have loaned it out to somebody. Um, Warren Andaman's book on animal viruses is very good. Spillover is another very good one. And like I said, a lot of these books are really, really good um, for the layperson that want to learn more about infectious diseases. Um then there's the whole string of books by uh, Dr. Paul Offit that I could have included um, that are primarily concerning vaccines, which are also very good. Anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you uh, during this unusual time in our in our history. And um, I encourage you to check some of these books out and uh, definitely increase your knowledge. It, it, it never hurts, right? And uh, again, subscribe to the channel. Share this video with your friends. Uh, like the video. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you read any of these books or if you're going to. And uh, let me know what you think about them. And I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV. Thanks a lot.